Oh. Yeah! We are hooked up! Welcome back, guys. Um, we are doing one last ice fishing trip. Just got back from Washington, D.C. And no turnaround, not going home. Had the snowmobile waiting at Aaron's house, picked it up, and we are now headed 10 hours up north. We are headed to Baker's Arrows Lodge, and it is a place I've never been before. That excites me. New locations are always exciting, um, but it's last ice. It's the best time to get on big lakers, big pike through the ice. I'm meeting a special co-host up there, but we got amazing weather. It's supposed to be between plus five and plus eight all week, and we're gonna end ice fishing season with a bang. Just stopped it, the logo go up. Oh boy, here's what we got going on. Monster Energy, this is one that I got hooked on in the East Coast with Nick. Striper fishing, it is zero ultra. So it's all the bad stuff for your body, but not all the really bad stuff. And then we got some Ronnie's Jumbos. These are, these are key for staying awake during a late drive. So yeah, like I said, I think it's an eight or nine hour drive. Gonna listen to some podcasts, make some phone calls, maybe talk to you guys a bit, but we're heading north for a week of fun on the ice. We've been driving for about four hours. We got four more hours to go. Decided to pull over. It is 3 a.m. now, and I'm feeling a little bit tired. I got some sunflower seeds, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. As you may have noticed, I'm wearing a dress shirt, not something I normally wear when I go ice fishing. I actually left straight from a funeral, but after every funeral, it just gets me thinking and with an eight hour drive, I've been doing a lot of thinking. And I mean, this is so cliche, but life is so short and just, I don't know. It's just, I feel so grateful that I have been able to find what I want to do and have been able to pursue it and I'm living my dream. I am so grateful for that. And I just want to encourage you guys, I, I don't know if it's making YouTube videos or if it's being a fishing guide or something completely non-fishing related. There's so much opportunity and I just, oh, I just wanna get you guys pumped to, to chase your dreams. It's not too late to make YouTube videos. So many people say it's saturated. There's too many people doing it. I want this to be your, your call to action. Just do what you wanna do. I, I have a brutal, brutal memory. I cannot remember what I had for lunch yesterday, but being able to document these things and and relive them. The fact that I was able to film the proposal with the help of my buddies, that was like, I can't wait to show my kids that one day. And just having that memory, it's, it's wild. I, I feel so fortunate that this is what my, my daily life has turned into. And I just want to encourage you guys. If that's way too much, if that's not what you want a normal fishing video, um, this is what you're getting. So I, I want this channel to be more than just fishing videos. I want to teach you guys. I want to inspire you guys. Just because I think everyone should be excited about what they get to do every day. And I don't think enough people are. So that is my call to action. I'm gonna get fishing or driving. We got an hour left and we're gonna get there at four in the morning. Yo yo, yo yo! We made it! 4-11. Housekeeping! Who's there? Hey, buddy. How are you? Mm. Okay, good night. It's almost time for that sunrise bite. This is gonna be my home for the week. Seems pretty nice, actually. Ooh! I'm going to sleep now for a number of hours. And then we'll probably get a pretty late start tomorrow. And we're up. We made it. I slept in a bit. It is, it's about noon right now. I got up at 10. We are, we're somewhat packed. Beautiful cabin. I'll give you guys a tour later yet, but we need to get fishing. Our co-host is waiting for us. Welcome to beautiful Northern Manitoba. Guys, I think we got the perfect week. It is supposed to be in the plus digits all week. It's plus five Celsius right now. It's supposed to hit plus eight. I'm gonna go meet my buddy out across the big lake. Um, he drew me a map of where to go, so hopefully I can find him. And 
Today we're lake trout fishing. So here we go. Oh, you got a bigger camera than me, though. What are the odds that we run into each other on the same spot? This is a big lake, eh? Clayton, shake everybody. Jay Siemens, everybody. Is that gonna be heavy enough? It's not bad. Or do you, I might have something heavier. It's not bad, I'll it, be honest. If it's I have not, something heavier, should I use it? Oh, for sure. Okay, I'll see. Clayton thinks I need a bigger rod. This was quite convenient. I didn't have this plan for Clayton to beak my rod but oh yeah that's 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 big enough yeah okay oh yeah I'd use this for sure <laughs> we got quick strike rig there we're gonna put this on the iFish Pro as you've seen in past videos it's kind of like a tip-up system that you can use with your rod Clayton's got bait Clayton's got everything set up the spot I just rolled up here it's full full guided by Clayton I'm going with a little chunk of meat on a quick strike rig Clayton's doing the full Cisco's and we're lake trout fishing I ate some of your porridge this morning. I hope that's okay. Perfect. Oh no, camera down, camera down. I blame it on Clayton. <laughs> All right, we got the Mondo rod hooked up here. Eight foot lake trout beast combo, 5,000 stratic. Will be some meat down there. Rod number one is rigged. Clayton's gonna cook me some soup and we're gonna get the second rod down there. That one will be maybe a little more active. So with lake trout fishing, I think more than any other freshwater species, chumming is so important. The other day I was fishing with my buddy Blaine, and this was probably like the best time that I've seen this, is we were fishing, I don't know, 100 yards apart. He was chumming, I wasn't. He outfished me seven to zero. Trout have an amazing sense of smell. They love to feed, as you've seen in Aaron's and Clayton's videos. They just are, they're scavengers too. They do chase baits, but they also just, cruise along the bottom and pick up everything. We're gonna throw it all down there, get that scent in. And we're fishing this spot for a couple days, so we're gonna keep chumming it every day, and it's just gonna get better and better. This is kinda gross, being so close to it. Dropping the aqua view, and I got it down, actually. Use my new handy-dandy little device that turns the camera. Oh, I don't know if you, can, you guys can see that. Here's my bait. Anyways, we'll get the camera set up here. If you guys wanna learn how to film with the aqua view and the gear you need, check out this video above I just did. I have two video on it, but for now, we're gonna get the battery pack and the recording device hooked up. Oh, he's there, he's circling. Oh, he's there. He might be eating the chum in the other holes. Oh, oh, he's coming for it. He's coming for it. Oh, he's gonna pick it up. Oh, oh, oh. That's a big fish, he's circling it. He's circling it. Come on, oh, there's a big one. There's the, oh, eat it. Guys, it's happening. On these clear northern lakes, like the ability to film the fish and to see them underwater is the coolest thing. You know the fish are in a negative mood when they're not eating chunks of meat laying on the bottom. But, oh there's a big one, he's back. He's circling, oh come on! Why don't they just eat it? I, I don't get, like what, what do you think's going on? So Clayton's actually gonna spend the night on the ice, which is awesome. He said I could have the whole cabin to myself. So that'll be good. He'll hold down the fort, make sure no one takes this spot. Um, did. If you guys remember our musky video from this fall, we did five tips for trolling. And today we're back. We're doing five hacks for GoPros. GoPro is, I think, the top camera used by outdoorsmen. They're small, they're powerful, and they're sweet. But there are some tricks that make it a lot easier. So today, Clayton and I, I'm gonna give you some pointers to make your GoPro experience a little more enjoyable. Sure. GoPros are like one of the best cameras just to get started with things. And I get those questions all the time, like what do you use for filming? Sorry, won't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I just knocked it down. Cut, cut. GoPros are like one of the best cameras just to get yourself started in the whole game of filming yourself. And they're kind of a cheaper, what's the word I'm looking for? A cheaper option yeah. just to start with to see if you enjoy, enjoy it. But you still use them. No matter what, they're like part of your arsenal. It's not like you're gonna stop using it. Totally. I run GoPros like nonstop when it comes from my, my fishing channel. And sometimes I'll have three going, sometimes I'll have two going. Rarely do I ever have one going. 
So the biggest thing I run into all the time or used to run into is power supply. You know, fishing days are anywhere between five hours to say 12 hours on a day like today. So I've gone with power supplies. You don't have to use something that's this substantial. You can go to a little power pack that you use to kind of charge your cell phone as well. But I, I got something that's a little bit bigger just so I can run all, I can run both of my GoPros or I can have another one charging because it does have a cigarette adapter here that you can have, you can be charging stuff off of that or run the underwater camera. And then it's got uh, the two clamps here as well for like uh, your lights in the shelter. It's got a little light on it too, but that's just to add a little bonus. So that's probably the biggest thing. If you can power the GoPros all day long without having to change the battery, batteries consistent, that's easily probably one of the best things about the whole power supply thing for sure. That's my first hack, a good power supply. Second hack would be probably the, the what do you call these things? Bendy arms. Bendy arms, little mounts, clamp, clamp mounts. You can pretty much put them anywhere. Inside the shelter, super handy. You can put them on the sides, up top, whatever you're gonna do to get that perfect angle. Today I have one here that's down and its job is to do nothing but capture the hole. So fish coming out, fish going down. And then my other one over there, that's capturing kind of like the whole scene, what's going on. It's just in case the main camera doesn't have everything in there, it's gonna have the whole hook set on it, whatever I need on it. Simplicity is everything. The, the less you mess with stuff, the more likely you are to film. As soon as you're dealing with batteries and everything else, you're gonna just give up. So battery, the bendy arm, because it's good in all situations. You don't need to bring along 15 different mounts. You bring along just the bendy arm. Number three is the memory card. So if you go to the uh, GoPro website, they give you a list of some recommended cards. The bigger cards I find are a little more faulty to stop recording. Um, right now I have some 128 gig cards that I really like that haven't been failing. I will link those below. But before you go and buy them, the cheapest card will not necessarily work. It'll sometimes crash. So that was number three. Number four, and if you don't have big memory cards or don't have the luxury to purchase a bigger card, there's something called looping mode. And essentially what looping mode does is it it's always recording and it records over itself. So you can choose different time frames. So you can choose five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. So it'll record up to 20 minutes and then once it hits 20, it'll just start recording over itself. So if you have a camera that's just sitting to film a tip up, that's a great use to use the looping function. Uh, make sure you practice it beforehand because otherwise you might screw it up and miss the shot. Looping function, great way to save on memory if you're short on hard drive space. All right, so the last tip and and these aren't hacks. I don't know why I said hacks. They're more so just tips. But the last one, and everyone has their own system of doing things, but when something interesting happens, I'll often end the clip. Obviously, if you're looking through the footage and there's a, a fish on the screen, you're gonna know to use that, but let's say something goofy is said or something, something small happens that you might not think you're gonna catch in editing. I just like to press stop and start again, and then when I'm editing, I know to check the end of every clip to see if something good happened, because otherwise, depending on how you edit, but you're looking through hours of footage and you might miss something small. So that's the last tip. And that is the GoPro tips of the day. And we're gonna get back to fishing. I'm thinking bourbon. My first bite of the day. Oh man. This is why you never give up. What do we got? Oh, that's a, ooh, that's a fatty. Right there is what we're looking for, a little butterball. That is a bourbon. Look at that crazy looking fish. Freshwater eel almost. That is probably a five pounder, 20, 23, 24 inches. Good sign, but that jig is just gone. No skunking today. We're staying out all night, says Clayton. Nope. She's gone nice. through, the, through the chum slick. So we've been chumming these holes for Lakers, but the burbot will come in. If the Lakers haven't eaten the chum by night, the burbot are gonna slither up on these humps and eat it. Uh, the light's gone. We're probably gonna fish for a little bit long. We'll see, the burbot are moving in, so. We'll see how long, I'm going home. We'll see how long Clayton can handle it. Your spot came through, Clayton. I don't care what Cindy says about you. All right, see if we can get, see if we can get one more fish before we gotta call it a day. I was not filming for my last fish. 
I did catch two burbot. Only one was documented. Clayton just caught a burbot. If you want to see his video, it's going to be linked right above here. It'll probably be out. It'll be out much before mine. Anyways, it'll be linked above here. If you want to see how Clayton did today, click on that. Also, make sure to subscribe to his channel. Oh. Yeah, there we go. That's what we wanted. One last bite. What do we got? Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Something unfolding. Are we done, Clay, or can I catch one more? Clayton's gonna let me catch one. He's a nice man. Thanks, Dad. We're gonna call it a night. That was very nice to end with a little bit of action. This is day one of our trip up at Baker's Narrows Lodge on at the Papasqui. At the Papaskow. Um, at the Pap, we'll call it. In northern Manitoba, a gem. This is a massive body of water, and we are just scratching the surface. We're gonna be doing burbot, lakers. Maybe some, maybe some pike, maybe some walleye. I'm not sure, we're here all week. This is ending off my ice fishing season. And thank you guys for coming along. Make sure to subscribe to Clayton. You'll be able to watch all of his days as well as we're out here. And that's about it. We'll see you tomorrow.